The Triple M Grill Team. <laughs> Turn Gus, MG and Matty on 6 till 9 weekdays. Channel 10 News did a story last night on how much Russian propaganda is taking place around this MH17 crash. And uh, on their, uh, on the all through the Russian uh, news networks. Now, this was Channel 10 News last night translating how the Russians are reporting the crash. Now, the official investigation is yet to begin, but the Ukraine's emergency service have finally began to collect them. Now, we are in a civil war zone, so that makes the uh, the commencement of the identification process, along with uh, all the other necessary activities in such a case, very, very difficult. Now, the self-defense militia are calling it somewhat of a sabotage on the part of the official Ukrainian government and promise uh, 100% safety for foreign investigators. Local leaders say it's simply inhumane to expose the bodies of nearly 300 victims to 30 degree heat. And Polly Mersens, uh, she's a New York-based reporter who grew up in Kiev and uh, obviously can speak uh, Ukrainian and uh, also Russian. Now, Polly was the first Western journalist to translate the Russian and Ukrainian video and, and messages that were posted online immediately after the crash. And uh, she knows a lot about the Ukrainian region where the Malaysian airliner uh, crashed after this, uh, during this absolute tragedy. And uh, the and uh, Polly, we, we welcome you to the grill team. And uh, Polly, this, this region of the Ukraine that you know well, I'll tell what it's become hugely problematic but getting a lot worse yes thank you so much for welcoming me i'm happy to speak with you this region is getting much worse we've seen this actually as a war zone over the last several months however once this crash hit we really saw a complete militant occupation occur almost immediately so it's a place that's not been particularly pleasant since about march when we saw really the russian occupation of certain areas of ukraine take hold However, this is the absolute worst that we've seen it in the Donetsk area since then. Now, now Polly, can, can you see the Russians coming out in the next couple of days and, and, and telling what the world want, you know, actually some explanations and perhaps an apology? I don't see that this happened. Well, I really just don't see Putin ever issuing a true apology. Mm. He had issued his condolences. And unfortunately, as far as for issuing real facts about what's occurred, they have not been able to really have a full-blown investigation. The people on the ground there are mainly rebels, and they lack the aviation expertise, and they lack the autopsy and medical expertise to really explain what's occurred. So much of these answers that we're looking for, they need to come from professionals. And the people that are doing the investigation simply are not professionals because the professionals are being held at the bay by the separatists. Uh, Polly, are you able to tell us what the groundswell of opinion is from the Russian people or the the Ukrainian people individually? Are they are they aghast at what's happened with this air crash? Absolutely. The people on both sides are truly aghast. I've seen a lot of images coming through on social media of both Ukrainian and Russian civilians offering apologies and condolences. We saw so many images of people offering pictures and teddy bears to the victims saying that this is just the most horrendous thing that could have occurred. And the civilians, the people on the ground that are apart from the politicians, the regular people there that are being hurt by this, they're issuing apologies on their own. They're offering their own condolences. And in that way, the Ukrainian and Russian people are so similar. However, on a larger scale, we are seeing a blame game happen. The Ukrainians want the Russians to take responsibility, mm. and many of the Russians and the Ukrainians in the east, which is a largely Russian-occupied area, they want to see the Ukrainian people take responsibility. So while everyone is truly horrified by the events, there are still these underburdened problems. Everyone still wants to see somebody else in trouble over mm. this. Uh, Polly, since Vladimir Putin come into power a, a while ago he's acquired incredible we wealth and um, there was reports a little early that he could be worth up to 70 billion dollars and when you consider that uh that bill gates is worth 53 it is it's absolutely mind-blowing uh he seems to be a guy that is taking like he, he, he takes his cues from the old-fashioned imperialists of russia like the old czars um, and we see some of his propaganda. We see him, you know, hang gliding. We see him you know, wrestling, apparently bears. wrestling bears, swimming with sharks, out there, you know, uh, swimming in freezing cold rivers, all this propaganda. Where is this heading? What is the wish of Russia? They want to appear as all-powerful as possible. And that's where all those images come from of Putin shirtless riding a horse, so trying to appear regal. That all comes from trying to create this image of an all-powerful dictatorship, 
a country that is truly untouchable. And a lot of his wealth, and really showing that wealth in public, whether he truly has the $17 billion or not, he wants to appear as though he does, so the country will appear economically untouchable. Because they have so much oil money, they really want to say, look at us, we are the biggest, we are the best, not even the United States, not all of Europe working together as a union can take us down. So right now, they're really working to control every political situation they've been put in and every economic situation they might be put in in the future. Polly, he doesn't seem like he's going to apologise. And, um, you know, the the Australian Prime Minister has come out and been vocal against Vladimir Putin and Russia, and, of course, the, the Dutch Prime Minister as well has been very, very strong. What's the next step? I mean, if the guy continues to snub his nose and refuses to apologise, because the West at the moment is so nervous, America is so nervous to push against Russia. Absolutely. We are seeing a lot of nervousness. However, I think Australia, in a very interesting way, may actually be leading economic repercussions for Putin. The Prime Minister said that Russia may be excluded from the next G20 economic summit. Mm. If that occurs, it's really a larger global step to say, we don't want the Russian economic dollars. We don't want them playing with us in the trading field. So for that to happen, we may actually see Australia be the leaders in saying that economic sanctions are necessary. The U.S. has had a lot of fear because two of our largest companies, ExxonMobil and Chevron, have very long-term and incredibly lucrative deals with Russian oil company Rosneft. So while the U.S. is in a difficult position to push economic sanctions, this may be the final straw, and this really may be what we need. And the U.S., and me especially, which relies so heavily on Russian energy, may just say that, you know, we have to take this hit in order to hit Russia's economy. And I would say that while sanctions toward oil may not be immediate, we are seeing the push that this has to happen soon. We're not going to see a war on the ground tomorrow, but on Monday morning in the U.S., mm. we should expect President Obama to discuss sanctions much more strongly, much more heavily than ever before. And this is truly being led by the Australian Prime Minister's statement that perhaps Russia might not even be included in the G20 summit, which is very important in the global economic sphere. Yeah, we're in a precarious situation, Polly, because we, we depend so closely on, on, on China, and we know that the links between China and Russia are, were very, very tight. Polly, look, we really appreciate your uh, expertise this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Polly McSenz, a reporter for The Wire in uh, New York. Thank you. The Grill Team, Gus, MG and Maddie Johns. Triple M Breakfast.